I think it's an intriguing theory. Uh, I've glanced at the paper. Um, you know, they're looking at the orbits of very distant objects in our solar system out in the Kuiper Belt, uh, where Pluto is. But even more distant than Pluto, there's a bunch of objects that have kind of odd orbits. So they've come up with an explanation that says there could be a super Earth-sized planet, so a planet between the size of Earth and Neptune, very, very far out, such that its orbit around the sun would take almost 20,000 years. Right. So is it there? <laughs> is it not? Are there other explanations? But look, we were, already, we were already seeing planets in other solar systems. What's amazing is that we would have missed one this big in our own. It is, but on the other hand, if it has this huge orbit and you have to be looking at the right place at the right time, but the fact that we haven't seen it makes me a bit skeptical. Their intriguing point is we've identified lots of uh, planets in this category of super Earths with our Kepler Space Telescope, over 5,000 planet candidates. The fact that we don't have that, a planet in that size class between Earth and Neptune makes us think, well, maybe we are missing one and, and maybe they've predicted but it. But what it does show, and, and, and you'll I think bear me out on this, is that it is quite an exciting time. I mean, there still seems, it's not like we've discovered all there is to discover, have we? There's just so much coming in. We have the, the comet landing on the comet. I mean, it's just endless. When I talk to school kids, I say, you, you know, you need to major in science, technology, engineering and math because what's going to happen over the next 20 years as we start exploring these planets around other stars that we've been discovering with our Kepler Space Telescope we're going to start analyzing their atmospheres with our James Webb Space Telescope that'll launch in a few years. And so there's going to be this whole field of trying to understand, are these planets around other stars potentially habitable? And it's the kids today that are going to have that opportunity, as well as being our potential right. future Mars astronauts. But you're trying to make them interested in science. Yes. Of course, you, you're going to give them pictures of people landing on the moon and the like. But actually, a lot of the science isn't landing on the moon, is it? It is complicated mathematics really isn't it to work out that there's another planet that we didn't know about right but, but I, you know i think that's fun when you can talk to kids about saying you know you think of math as being boring and hard but just think of it as a tool that you can use to explore a planet right. to land on a distant planet to image a planet around another star then maybe at least they can think oh maybe it's worth doing my homework tonight. let's talk about mars because obviously landing on mars would be a big inspiration and that would be very exciting do you think the race to get on mars is going to be a race or is it going to be a collaboration in the way that the International Space Station is, do you think? I think the space station is a great model for it because I do think it's going to be a huge collaboration. You know, the U.S. can't do it alone. When we landed on the moon, you know, we were pretty much, NASA was doing that on our own, and that really was a race. But when we look at Mars, we've got over 16 space agencies from around the world that are collaborating on something called the Global Exploration Roadmap. So we're trying to figure out how do we get humans beyond low Earth orbit, out to the vicinity of the moon, and then to the surface of Mars eventually in about and, 20 and, years. And whose flag is going to be planted on Mars at first? If it is a sort of an international collaboration, the UN flag? Or I, do you think you the know, Americans will say, we're paying most, we want our flag? Or I think there will be lots of flags planted, <laughs> but I really do think it'll be an international crew that gets there. And the other part, it's not just the international aspect of it, it's also a public-private. You know, we've got private companies who are saying, we want to go to Mars. And so it's a whole new way of collaborating, a whole new way of trying to move humans outward into the solar system. Ellen Stofan, thanks very much for coming. Nice talking to you.